You might wonder why we need to revisit the topic of folic acid use during pregnancy. Hasn't this issue long since been resolved? You might ask. Scientifically, the answer is yes, but the importance of folic acid must be kept at the forefront of the obstetric practice because it is easy to take it for granted despite being one of the simplest way known to reduce the incidence of certain serious birth defects. Before we jump into any conclusions, let's begin with one simple question why doctors prescribe folic acid tablets during pregnancy or even prior to it. In 1965, Hubbard reported an association between a relative maternal folic acid deficiency and an increased rate of neural tube defects, in particular open spina bifida and anencephaly. Spina bifida is a birth defect that occurs when the spine and spinal cord don't fully develop in the womb, resulting in a gap in the spine. Anencephaly is a fatal birth defect where a baby is born without parts of the brain and skull. The neural tube, which develops into the brain and spine, doesn't close properly in the first few weeks of pregnancy. This exposes the developing brain and spinal cord to amniotic fluid, which causes the nervous system tissue to break down. Most pregnancies with anencephaly end in miscarriage or stillbirth. If the babies are born alive, they usually live just a few hours or days. In 1980, Smithles reported a non-randomized trial that suggested multivitamin with 360 micrograms of folic acid would prevent 70% of open spina bifida and anencephaly cases. These trials were the reason why in September 1992, the U.S. Public Health Service recommended that all women capable of becoming pregnant should consume 400 micrograms of folic acid per day on an ongoing basis to reduce their risk for having a pregnancy affected by spina bifida and anencephaly. According to a study of Swedish women by researchers at the Karolinska Institute, pregnant women who have low blood levels of the vitamin folate are more likely to have early miscarriages than are pregnant women who have adequate folate levels so it suggests that folic acid may reduce the risk of stillbirth. Other complications of low folic acid levels during pregnancy include placenta abruption and severe language deficits in the offspring. Now that we know why it is recommended to use folic acid during pregnancy by many obstetricians, let's have a look at the recommended form and dosage of folic acid during pregnancy. The primary form of folic acid recommended for pregnant women is synthetic folic acid, typically found in prenatal vitamins and fortified foods. While naturally occurring folate from food sources like leafy greens, beans, and citrus is beneficial, the synthetic form is more concentrated and effective in increasing and maintaining adequate folate levels in the blood. Debate continues about whether a balanced diet provides sufficient folic acid. Although eating a good diet is encouraged, the randomized trials showing that folic acid prevents spina bifida include women who took a folic acid supplement pill in addition to eating their usual diet. The most common recommendation is to take 400 micrograms of folic acid daily before conception and during the early stages of pregnancy. Some healthcare providers may recommend higher doses in special circumstances, such as for women with a history of neural tube defects or certain medical conditions. In such cases, a daily intake of 4,000 micrograms may be advised, but this should only be taken under medical supervision. When to start taking folic acid, the key to maximizing the benefits of folic acid lies in timing. Women should begin taking folic acid before pregnancy. Ideally, all women of childbearing age should consume adequate folate or folic acid in their diet or through supplements before they conceive. Since many pregnancies are unplanned, Starting folic acid three months prior to conception is recommended. During early pregnancy, the critical period for folic acid is within the first trimester, particularly during the first 28 days after conception. This is when the neural tube, which eventually develops into the baby's brain and spinal cord, is forming. Adequate folic acid levels can significantly reduce the risk of neural tube defects. While the early stages of pregnancy are crucial for folic acid intake, Continuing to take folic acid throughout pregnancy remains important. It supports the overall growth and development of the fetus and helps prevent anemia in the mother, which can lead to complications during labor. Food sources of folic acid and folate. Although supplementation is vital, incorporating folate-rich foods into your diet can provide additional benefits. Some excellent sources of folate include leafy green vegetables such as broccoli and spinach, Brussels sprouts, peas, citrus, fruits such as bananas and melons, tomato juice, eggs, beans, legumes, mushrooms, 
asparagus, kidney, liver meat, poultry, pork, shellfish, wheat bran, fortified cereals. It's best to avoid drinking alcohol with folic acid, as alcohol may stop folic acid being absorbed. Your folic acid may not work as well. It's safer not to drink any alcohol if you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant, because it can damage your baby's growth. Excessive consumption. While folic acid is recommended during pregnancy to help prevent birth defects, taking too much can have negative effects on the developing baby. Excess folic acid can cause neurodevelopmental changes in the baby, including impaired growth in the womb and slowed brain development. Babies of mothers who took too much folic acid may be more likely to develop insulin resistance, diabetes, asthma, and obesity later in life. Please take precaution while consuming folic acid supplements. Excessive of anything is harmful to your and your baby's health. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and like this video for more health-related content.